This is my tablet. It's mounted on a wall via the uh, 3D printed adapter. I can easily pull it out and use it as a regular tablet if I ever wanted to. The app I'm using and the system I'm using is from 3CX. It's free. So click on contact and then call the tablet. There you go. It's calling right now. One, two, three. One, one, two, three. On the screen, there's the various buttons that will work as a uh, normal phone. The only exception to this is that it has video. So you can talk and convert over video if you want. There's also text messaging. I don't know why you would use that, but it is there as an option. Pretty slick. Setting the whole intercom system in the house is actually fairly easy. You don't even need super high-end phones or tablet. The lowest end I'm actually using is the Samsung S7 as seen in this video. Here's a Samsung S2 tablet. Yep, this thing is ancient. The only latest tablet that's actually new in the house is this Samsung tablet right here. If you don't have a 3D printer, that's fine. There's various adapters that you can buy on eBay as well as Amazon. Once you have the tablets and the phones mounted in the rooms to be used as intercom system, let's set up the intercom system. All you need is this Raspberry Pi. You can connect it to your switch, which is what I'm doing right here, or you can also use it as wireless. For reliability, I'm just going to use hardwire directly into my switch. It will need a power cable and one of those USB power plugs. The full instruction is actually here from 3CX directly. First, let's download the image for the micro SD card. It is a huge zip file. Once the download is done, go ahead and open the zip file, extract it. I'm going to extract it to my download folder. So go ahead and copy the path to where this IMG file is located. To write the file to the micro SD card, we're going to use Win32 Disk Imager. Click on Open and paste in the path of wherever that IMG file is located. Select the micro SD card that you inserted into your computer. Make sure that you choose the right folder or else you're going to format your hard drives. So once you select the right path to that micro SD card, go ahead and click on Write. It's going to ask you, are you sure you want to erase everything on this disk? Click on Yes. You can click on Cancel and then click on Cancel again. Don't worry about it for now. This whole process takes about 10 minutes, so go ahead and grab yourself some ice cream. Once it's done writing, don't eject the micro SD card yet. Go ahead and go to that folder that's labeled Boot. Right click on it, New Text Document. Name it SSH and delete the extension. There's absolutely no extension whatsoever, so it's just a file. It's not a text file, as you can see here. Now, go ahead and pop the micro SD card out of your computer and then plug it into the Raspberry Pi. As I mentioned before, we're using hardwire, so go ahead and connect a Cat5 cable from the Raspberry Pi to your network. To find the Raspberry Pi on your local network, go ahead and open a program like Advanced IP Scanner and click on Scan. There you go, you can see that the Raspberry Pi is located at 192.168.1.32. Now, connect to it using PuTTY. So open PuTTY up and type in the IP address, 192.168.1.32. When you click on open, it's going to ask you, are you sure you want to go there? Click on yes. Login is pi, pi, the password is raspberry. Enter. Go ahead and copy and paste this long command in, highlight it, control C, and then jump back to PuTTY to right click. When you right click, it will automatically paste in. Don't do control V. It's going to start downloading and installing, and this takes a while as well. When it's done, it's going to ask you for a URL. Now, to get the URL, go ahead and sign up with Google. Click on your Google account. Click on continue. Fill in whatever you want. I don't think it matters. Click on next. Click on the free accounts and then click on next. This is the URL that you want to use. Here's the username and password, which you probably don't need. Go ahead and go back to PuTTY and type in your URL. 
hit tab on your keyboard to jump to OK and then click on Enter. It's going to ask you for a key ID. To get to your key ID, go ahead and log into your 3CX account, which was the URL that he gave out earlier before. Click on Admin. Go to Voice and Chat. Add SBC. It's a Raspberry Pi. And then continue. This is the key ID that they want, so go ahead and copy it and save it somewhere else. Now that you have the key ID, go ahead and enter in here. Once it's entered, hit tab on your keyboard to jump to OK and then hit enter. Wait for about 5 minutes and your machine is ready as seen here. Hit enter to exit. Sweet. With the Raspberry fully configured, now it's time to set up some extensions. Extensions are basically phone numbers tied to whatever tablet that you have mounted already. So go into the URL of your 3CX account, go down to Admin, click on Users, click on Add User. The extension is given automatically. Enter the name. In my case, I'm going to give it a tablet or phone. Click on Save. I'm going to go back because I don't need to add any more at this moment. Let's click on the tablet black, the one that you saw earlier in the video. Honestly, you really don't need to memorize this because you just select it from a list of contacts. But this QR code is important. We only really care about this QR code. On your phone or tablet, go ahead and download the 3CX app. Click on Agree. And then click on Scan QR Code. Go ahead and scan that QR code that you saw earlier. Click on Allow for it to have access to your camera. Click on Continue, click on Allow, and Allow. And there you go. This phone is now ready to call other phones or tablets. I won't be going over the whole interface of this app, but if you click on Contacts, you'll see all of the available extensions. If for whatever reason you want to call manually, you can always hit the keypad. Looking at the Contacts, you can see there's various options. There's the uh, Call button for audio. There's the text messaging. I don't know why you would do that, but it's there. There's also send email and video. Interestingly enough, there's voicemail. So you can always uh, leave a voicemail for the other rooms, and then the other rooms can check later. There's so much you can do with the whole interface, I'm not going to go over it. But down in the comment section, I'll have a link to a video to show you how to use the whole thing. One of the most annoying things about the 3CX app on Android is that it's stuck on portrait mode. So if you have your tablet mounted in landscape mode, as I do right here, when you open the 3CX app, it looks like this. Yeah, it's kind of annoying. So I'm thinking there must be an app, maybe an Android thing, to force the, the app to work like this. I don't mind the black bars on the side, but it's too bad that's not an option as of now. Or maybe if you know of such a way, please let me know. But 3CX is amazing, and I don't know why it's free. Well. If you have under 10 users, it's free. But if you have more than 10 users, it's not free. Now, even though the whole user interface is reliant on the cloud, the whole system still works locally without getting online. That's amazing. How do I know? I verify this by going into my router and block the Raspberry Pi from ever getting online. Amazingly, I was still able to use my phone to call my tablets or my tablets to call other tablets. So it's working locally just fine. Obviously, you wouldn't want to block it if you ever plan on using the app and you're like somewhere outside from another state and want to call home and talk to your kids. Or if your kids want to call you, they can always jump onto the tablet and your phone has to be connected online. The Raspberry Pi has to be online as well to connect both of you together. Or if you really want everything to be 100% local, you can still block the Raspberry Pi, but you have to set up a VPN to be connected back into your house. That way, everything stays locally, but your phone is remote and still work back at home via this VPN tunnel. Are you wondering, is there an alternative? Is there a way that I don't have to buy a Raspberry Pi 3? And the answer is yes. If you have Home Assistant, it will add the asterisk server onto your HA machine. Unfortunately, I was not able to get this asterisk up and running. It is extremely hard. And you can tell it's hard because there's 750 posts here. 
Even I myself couldn't get it up and running. If you try to find a tutorial on how to set it up on YouTube, forget about it. I don't know why nobody has made a video of it yet. Maybe it is super hard, or maybe for some smart people, it's so obvious they don't even bother posting it up for noobs like myself. So if you do know how to set up Asterisk, please do everybody a favor and show us how to do it. Here's a screenshot of me attempting to set up Asterisk up and running in Home Assistant, but it doesn't work. If I click on Call, it'll look like it initiated the call, but it'll automatically hang up instantly. I have no idea how to do it. Hopefully somebody knows how to do it. The idea is having one interface for everything in the house. That way, nobody has to jump through another app to initiate the call or receive the call. Right, hopefully this video helps you to set up this sweet free intercom system at your house. You don't have to use anything fancy. You don't have to use the latest phone or latest tablets. Everything can be set up for relatively dirt cheap. There's no monthly fees whatsoever, assuming that there's less than 10 users, of course. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel, liking this video, and thanks for watching.